democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Tonight, Texas plans to use a new lethal injection procedure for the first time in three decades. Like several other states, Texas had to change its execution process due to a shortage of sedatives, sodium thiopental. The new process was shrouded in secrecy until recently. Now, records reveal Texas prison officials chose a replacement execution drug without consulting a medical professional. The documents also show officials relied on news articles to help them choose a sedative for the state's three-drug lethal injection cocktail that's intended to prevent pain, inhibit muscle movement, and stop the inmate's heart. Now, instead of the drug sodium thiopental, Texas will use a substitute drug called pentobarbital, a surgical sedative often used to euthanize animals. About a dozen states are experimenting with their execution procedure. After the only American manufacturer of sodium thiopental announced in January it's halting production in the United States. Attorneys representing death row prisoners argue the new methods suffer from a lack of oversight to ensure they're humane. Prison officials in four states are also accused of trying to stick with using the original drug, sodium thiopental, by purchasing it from a questionable overseas source. On Friday, the Drug Enforcement Agency demanded Kentucky and Tennessee hand over their supply of the drug because of concerns it may have been illegally imported. Just weeks before, the agency seized Georgia's supply of the drug, which was purchased from the same British-based company called Dream Pharma. The company operates out of the back of a driving school in London. Well, in Texas, there's an extra layer of alleged illegal behavior and how the state acquired the replacement execution drug it plans to use tonight. New documents reveal the state used a DEA registration number registered to a hospital that hasn't existed since 1983. We're joined now by the attorney who obtained those records. Maury Levin teaches at the University of Texas Law School's Capital Punishment Clinic, represented death row prisoners in state and federal courts since 1993. She's co-counsel for Cleve Foster, who's scheduled to be executed tonight, 6 p.m. Texas time. Foster is scheduled to die for killing a Fort Worth woman in 2002. We're also joined by Richard Dieter, executive director of the Death Penalty Information Center in Washington, D.C., a nonprofit group that aims to educate the public about capital punishment. Um, let's start in Austin. Maury Levin, talk about what you've learned about the drug being used in this new lethal, lethal injection cocktail. Uh, what I've learned is fairly minimal, uh, because the nature of the process has been—its um, its hallmark has really been secrecy and a lack of transparency. We have had to um, go to the courts uh, to compel the Texas Department of Criminal Justice to hand over information about the, how they were going to execute Mr. Foster, um, who's now scheduled for execution today. Uh, and they didn't hand over that information until three weeks ago. Um, so what what we've learned, we've learned uh, through a lot of effort. And um, it includes a really astonishing lack of care and deliberation uh, in the manner in which they uh, chose to switch to the drug pentobarbital instead of sodium thiopental, and uh, the procedure by which it uh, is being incorporated into the execution protocol and the execution protocol itself, none of which was, you know, vetted to the public um, for, you know, comment. Uh, or, or consideration by those, you know, who have really valid concerns about that, how, how executions are carried out in Texas. Richard Dieter, can you talk about the significance of this, of the state seizing these drugs uh, in the DEA in different states? Sure. Uh, sodium thiopental, the first drug that's in controversy, this is the linchpin that has uh, been used in executions for 30 years in the United States. And now, all of a sudden, uh, it's being replaced because it's, it's in short supply around the world. And, and states are doing this in, in sort of a haphazard, experimental way rather than uh, through the expert uh, testimony of doctors about what would be the, the best way to proceed. And, and so we have a lack of due process, a lack of uh, transparency. Uh, when New York 
changed from uh, hanging to uh, the electric chair a uh, hundred years ago. They had a debate in their legislature, and then it eventually went to the Supreme Court. And they said, well, at least there was there was some uh, due process, some some care about this being a more humane procedure. We haven't had that in Texas and a number of other states. Instead, there's you know pulling drugs from uh, questionable overseas sources, using drugs that might work, might not. Who knows? It's a, it's a bit of an experiment on human subjects, of course, who are unwilling human subjects, and that raises a lot of ethical issues as well. What do you think has to happen now, Richard Dieter? Well, I think that the states need to have more transparency. Why not have a, uh, a procedure where people can comment, where experts, doctors, anesthesiologists could say, Pentobarbital, this new drug you're about to use, uh, has adverse reactions on certain people, people, uh, you know, may be allergic to it, or it doesn't work as long as the drug you're replacing. Uh, and it, it's crucial that this drug work, because the next two drugs, everybody agrees, are extremely painful. Uh, that, you know, we, we can kill human beings, but we're trying to do it humanely. And that all depends on the first drug working. And, and this is brand new. After 30 years, we're, we're trying something brand new. That requires the care uh, that a civilized society would use for, for humane processes. Uh, but Ohio has gone forward. Oklahoma has gone forward. Now Texas is going forward uh, with something that's relatively untried. Um, Maury Levine, I wanted to read to you this letter I have from a Danish company uh, to the Department of Re Rehabilitation and Correction. This one is in Columbus, Ohio, but has been sent to many states. Uh, it's the Lumbeck uh, Corporation. Um, it says, in the wake of the decision by Hospira to cease production of sodium thiopental, which is used in the execution of prisoners, Lundbeck has become aware that the state of Ohio has now decided to use Lundbeck's product Nembutol which is pentobarbital sodium injection, for this purpose. Lundbeck is adamantly opposed to the use of Nembutol, or any product for that matter, for the purpose of capital punishment. We recognize, the letter goes on to say, that we cannot control how licensed healthcare professionals use this or any pharmaceutical product. Nevertheless, we urge you to discontinue the use of Nembutol and the execution of prisoners in your state, because it contradicts everything we are in business to do, uh, provide therapies that improve people people's lives. And it's signed by um, Stefan Schuberg, who is the president of Lumbeck, Inc. Uh, your thoughts on this and what this means? My understanding is that that letter was sent to uh, officials with the Texas Department of Criminal Justice as well. Uh, you know, I, I think it just—it points up the uh, uncomfortable uh, intersection of what are necessarily, uh, you know, medical drugs, drugs that are intended to help people, and their use in executions and the killing of people. Um, when and and I don't know the degree to which Texas took that letter or Lundbeck's. Uh, sentiments into account. Uh, we do know uh, that, according to an affidavit given by Rick Thaler, who's the director of the uh, uh, Correctional Institutional Division of TDCJ, um, who is the person tasked with uh, making the decision about uh, the drugs and how the executions in Texas are carried out, that what he considered, according to an affidavit by him, in making the switch to pentobarbital um, were, you know, news reports from Oklahoma that a couple of executions that had taken place there um, proceeded, uh, you know, without apparent uh, problems, and uh, some of the legal pleadings in Oklahoma 
Oklahoma litigation and the report of the state's expert in Oklahoma. He did not apparently bother to look at uh, the, the pleadings of the other side or the expert who gave a declaration and offered testimony um, uh, on behalf of the inmates' attorneys. I mean, you know, and all of this points up the fact that there was, you know, there was at least some kind of process in Oklahoma where some of these issues were considered. And the fact that it was uh, considered, to some degree, in Oklahoma uh, doesn't resolve um, the question or, or, or the need for transparency and process here in Texas. It's, uh, you know, it's a different system. We do use the three-drug protocol, uh, but, you know, it, it's a different execution chamber. It's a different execution team. Um, all the protocols are different. And state what are you state. asking so, for in the case uh, of what are you asking for in the case of um, of tonight's execution? What are you demanding in the case of the execution of Clee Foster? Well, I mean, we're we're asking. We have a couple of different things that we're asking for from from different venues. Uh, we filed a lawsuit. Uh, seeking, uh, asking the courts to declare this new protocol using pentobarbital void for failure to comply with the Administrative Procedure Act. And lest we think that that is just some kind of administrative requirement, um, we should remember that the Administrative Procedure Act, the APA, um, and the requirements reflected in that law are those that are at the heart of open government, requirements of notice and comment and open meetings. So uh, we did ask the trial court in Travis County to declare uh, the protocol, the 2011 uh, execution protocol void. We were turned down uh, in that request, and that's on appeal. Um, we are also asking we have we have sent letters and you referred to this in your introduction we have sent letters to the Department of Justice uh, in Washington, D.C., to Attorney General Eric Holder, and to the Texas Department of Public Safety, uh, Stephen McCraw, here in Austin, outlining what we believe to be illegalities in the manner in which Texas purchased uh, these drugs that they're planning to use in Mr. Foster's uh, execution. And, frankly, as far as I understand it, in the manner in which they've been purchasing drugs since 1983, mm. uh, the authorization number that is required uh, to purchase controlled substances uh, is registered to the Huntsville Unit Hospital, which was shut down um, in the mid-'80s. So we're looking at over 25 years of of purchases um, using an authorization number registered to an entity that no longer exists. We're going to leave it there. Exist. Uh, Maury Levine, I want to thank you for being with us, co-counsel for Cleve Foster. He's scheduled to be executed tonight in Texas. She's represented death row prisoners since 1993 and teaches at the University of Texas Law School's Capital Punishment Clinic. And thanks to Richard Dieter, executive director of the Death Penalty Information Center. This